Hey guys, welcome back to the Run With Jay channel where we talk about running, fitness, and lifestyle. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. If you like the videos, please feel free to hit that like button and consider subscribing. Um, in today's video, we're going to be talking about 10 things you didn't know you could do with Strava using the website. And so I want to give a shout out to my buddy Steve over at the UK for giving me this video idea. And for those of you that don't know what Strava is, it's basically the Facebook for athletes. It's a place where you can post your uh, training online and people from all over the world can like, comment, and follow you. So let's not waste any time and let's get going. So one of the things that you can uh, use the web app for is to add things like your running shoes or your bicycles. For um, for the app, you're allowed to add your watch. However, I don't believe it lets you add your running gear or bikes. So when you're in the web app, you want to go to the top right where your profile picture is. And then you want to select settings. And that will bring you to your profile. And then you want to select my gear on the left hand side. And here is where it lists all the gears that you already have. And if you wanted to add a new bike or a running shoe, you would click that button. Uh, we'll go ahead and make a test one. So uh, you can choose, in the, choose from tons of brands that it has here. Uh, we'll make an Adidas model, we'll call it test, test shoe. And nickname if you want to add anything or notes if you want to add things like your color condition and here on the bottom is your notification to let you know when you hit a certain mileage on that shoe which is pretty neat so we'll leave it at 400 and we'll add running shoe and then you'll see it pop up here adidas test shoe and for all of your shoes you can either retire them or you can delete them um, if you don't want them anymore so once you're done with that uh, for so on um, for bikes it's the same thing you add the name of the bike type of bike you have the weight the brand model and same thing and you save it and it'll pop up down here so once you're done and you want to put in, in put that shoe into a run um, I'm just gonna use my last training run as an example um, I'll go to the main page and then my, your training log on the left hand side and then I'll just choose uh, my last run I uh, go to overview and here you can see the shoes that I use for that run so if I wanted to edit it with that new shoe we have I click the pencil button on the left hand side and here in the shoes option you can see the Adidas test shoe that we just created so once you're done with that you just select it and you hit save and the run should be updated with your new shoe so this tool is really good if you want to like keep track of your gear to see how many miles you're putting on it you know, it's a great tool to use to know that when it's time to like maybe change shoes or uh, see what kind of shoes you use for a certain run. So the second cool thing you can do on the web version of Strava is something called flybys. It's where you basically you're able to replay your run in real time. And you can also see who else was running around your area. So in order to get there, you would go to any one of your training logs or any recent runs that you've done so I'm gonna pick one that I know that it's in a public area where there will be a lot of other people with me so I go ahead and select that and then in the middle there will be a view flybys button where you can click and this will take you to the whole map of the run so here you can see the run is outlined over here um, also a cool thing is you can have the elevation map of your entire run so you know how where the hills are and where the you know incline and declines are so you can literally play your entire run in real uh, real time and of course you can you know speed it up you know fast forward it or you know make it slower so this is a really cool feature to see you know your run and learn more about uh, the route that you took and another cool thing about this is you can also see who else was running near you in the same area. So you see on the left hand side there's a huge list of people that, that was running around about the same time. And if you wanted to see their icons you would click on 
them so it'll pop up and then you can see how their routes start to appear on your map as well and then you see their circles which indicate where they are compared to you so this is a really fun tool to mess around with or you, can, you know you can stalk your friends and see where they've been running the past couple of days so on the left hand side you'll see these four letters f c s d so F stands for flyby. So if you see a check on here, that means um, this activity was a flyby with the primary activity of yours. Um, this also means that the activity was with, within 50 meters of you at some point and did not uh, ride with you for an extended period of time. So all of these, you know, obviously means they were within 50 meters of my run. So the green here, the C stands for correlation. So this means the percentage of time that this activity was close to the primary activity. So any correlations over 30% are considered group activity matches in Strava. The S stands for spatial correlation. So the, it's basically the time independent similarity of activity to the primary activity. And an activity traveling the same course will have a high spatial correlation regardless of the speed or start time of the activity and lastly D it stands for distance so basically tells you the total distance of each of the activities that everyone did on here so this is a great tool you know to have some to you know analyze your runs and see you know who else you've been running with or might have passed you by so yeah this is a fun tool to do and then you can only use this on the web um, page version of Strava and also you can upload this onto Facebook or Twitter in the top right corner there's a shortcut icon so you can post your flyby runs as well in social media. So number three is something called side by side comparisons. So this is cool because you can kind of look at your favorite athletes or your friends and you can kind of compare your stats compared to theirs. So to quickly get there, you would go to search and you want to type in, you know, the person you're looking for. And I, I'm going to use my uh, buddy Steve from the UK who gave me this idea for this video. So uh, once you pull up to their profile, you go all the way down and here you can see on the bottom right side is where your side to side comparison charts are. And again, if you bike or run or swim, you can toggle through you know the difference and you'll see um, depending on sport so we're just gonna do running in this case so as you can see you can see the last four weeks of the runs the average distance average time average runs and all your PRs which looks like Steve's kicking my butt in <laughs> um, and then total distance for 2020 and then you can change it to last year as well and then all time and you can also see um, the shoes that he uses as well so this is a pretty cool, you know, function to, you know, compare your stats with your friends or, you know, someone, anybody on Strava, basically. So yeah, this is the side by side comparisons. So number four on the list is something called training calendars. Um, it's, it's nothing super fancy, but um, you can get to it from the main page and the top toolbar training and then clicking training calendars it's just a great tool to kind of see the big picture of your you know training progress um, so when you're in here you can you know see the calendar um, the full year and it's broken down by month and it tells you for each month how many hours you have uh, also your total hours for 2020 and then of course you can toggle to 2019 um, as well and so forth and even in this little graph here, if you just, you know, hover over um, or actually if you click on a month here and then you hover over, you can kind of see the breakdown of your hours for each month. And then once you click on a specific month, it'll tell you the hours, the miles, the personal records and activities for that month, as well as listing all of your activity activities that you've done on Strava um, here in your calendar. So it's a nice tool to kind of, you know, aggregate everything to see the big picture or see when you're doing your rest days and when you're actually running hard. And you can click on any of these activities and it'll take you to that specific one. 
So I use it a lot to see, you know, what days am I uh, not pushing myself hard enough or just trying to get like statistics and do some analysis on my training um, routines and see where I can improve on. So the training calendar is a great tool to use uh, if you want to just learn more about how you're running or biking and how your training is going. Number five on the list is something called matched runs. So matched runs basically use an algorithm to automatically identify when you have completed runs on a route that's that you've ran before already. So if you run multiple routes, um, Strava will automatically group all of those runs together in a single chart to show you a performance trend over time, which is cool. Um, in order to match the similar runs, the algorithm identifies the starting and ending point of the route that you took. So the direction in which the route was run and the distance completed has to be the same. So um, where you can go see that is in the main page, you go to Strava and then you can go to your training log. And then I'm gonna select a, um, a run that I know how to match route. So I'm gonna click that and you see here in the middle somewhere it's, there's a view match runs button. So I'm going to hit that and then it takes you to the match the runs page where it tells you on the bottom all your other runs that has basically the kind of same type of run and beginning and end on and it tells you you know how that run compared to the one you just did um, it gives you a nice graph and everything it tells you if you ran faster um, your the total time your heart rate and all that so this is really cool if you know if you train on a specific route or you always like to run this segment at, at this location all the time and it'll tell you if you've improved if you've become faster so this is a nice tool um, to use if you want to compare similar runs that you've done in your history so this is the matched runs tool in Strava number six on the list is something called route builder so basically it lets you build your own route and then you can share it with people, um, use it on your phone to run with. Um, so it's a pretty neat feature so you can create your own routes uh, so you'll know what's like your favorite routes to go to or what you like to do for a certain type of runs. So to get there you go to your main page, you go into dashboard and then you go to my routes. And in there it'll ask you to select or create a new route if you don't have any. So here it's very similar to other route building applications where you select a starting point. So I'm just going to use anything as an example. And then you'll create your uh, routes and it'll automatically map everything for you. And it'll tell you how many miles and everything there is. So once you're done, the bottom will give you the overall distance, the elevation gain and the total estimated moving time. And you can also turn elevation off on the bottom right. And then this works for bicycles or um, cycling as well. So if you just click the ride button on the top, uh, you can change it to a ride instead of a run. And then once you're done, you hit the save button on the top right. And then it'll ask you for the run type. So you can choose road or trail and route name. So you're going to have to put in a name. So I'll put in test run. And then we'll hit the save button. And then it'll say it's been saved so, and you can view my route and here it just gives you an overview of your route along with basic data and then you can also see the elevation of your route on the bottom on the top you can print it out um, you can export it to the GPX format or the TCX format so they're both different formats for specific Garmin devices so you can uh, look up uh, which uh, format works for your Garmin device um, you can edit the run and then you can duplicate it. So this, once you've created this, this will automatically sync with your phone. So when you go to your phone Strava app and you click on routes, um, you'll be able to see this route and you'll be able to run uh, that same route with your phone in your hand or your watch. So you know now if you want to say you messed up on the run, you, you want to delete the route, you go to click on my running routes. And then you'll hit this wrench button on the right side and here you can edit or delete the route. So here we have on the phone, once you have your route saved, on the bottom you, you hit record and then you'll be taken to the you know the run start screen and here you can
can switch your routes to ones you have saved. So we have our test route save here. You select it and you hit start and accept and then you'll begin your run. And then you'll know which uh, turns to make and all that stuff. So this is pretty cool. Uh, this is your route building tool on Strava. So if you're ever missing a segment on your run, um, you can go and unhide it. You, most of the time, it's usually hidden. So on your training log, you can click that, and then you go to the um, run that you're um, having issues with. So I'm going to use one as an example. And then once you're in there, and you hit the segments section on the left-hand side, and it'll show you all the available sections in your run that you did. And then on the bottom, sometimes there's a show hit one hidden effort button, meaning that there's one um, segment that's hidden. So if you, you click that and then it'll show you right here. And then if you want to unhide it, you click the unhide button and then bam, all of your uh, segments will be back. Uh, so if you're having, having any issues with segments that you can't find, you can go here and most of the time it's hidden. Now, if you want to edit or crop your segments or runs, um, you can go to these three dots over here and hit the crop button. So, if for some reason your watch was not working correctly or you just didn't want to really record that last run where you, you know, you got injured, um, you can go to the crop button and then you can actually change the beginning and end of your run. So, on the top, there's like the scale here where you can adjust your run. So you know you can cut out a little bit of the end or cut out a little bit of the beginning and the blue parts on the map is where the run um, you're going to be cutting out. So on the bottom you can see as well as it'll give you a good idea of all the of your what your new run will look like because um, the grayed out areas are the areas that you're cutting. So you can adjust to your runs uh, as well if you ever need to using the crop function. Now you can't um, undo this once you complete it so it's kind of like a one shot thing. So make sure you definitely know that you want to you know, do crop before you go ahead with this since it can't be undone. And once you're done you hit that crop button and then your run will be adjusted. So I'm going to cancel out of that. And then once you're done with that, you want to make sure you click the refresh activity achievements where the three dots are again. So all of your statistics like you, any PRs or uh, like best times that you've gotten are updated as well according to your new run. Segments are a big thing on Strava and um, it's one of Strava's coolest features. Um, basically um, Strava takes portions of road or trails created by members on there and then it you know it separates that out so any athlete that runs past that section or a portion can uh, compare times with each other and then there's a you know there's a whole thing where people are trying to you know become number one in the segment to you know to kind of take the crown so number eight on the list is something called strava apps so you get there by going onto your dashboard and hitting explore and the app button so basically you know Strava partners with us tons and thousands of developers to create apps um, for all sorts of things so it could be something like uh, finding a partner or a friend to run with that runs the same speed as you or you know looking for something that gives you just enormous amount of data about your performance um, so there, you know there's tons of like uh, categories from charity you know social motivation performance, mobile, you know, all sorts of things. Uh, one app that I use is Garmin Connect, which syncs with my watch, and it just tells you more than enough information than you would ever need about your training and just your life. Uh, things like intensity minutes, your sleep time, uh, heart rate, um, you know, badges, and, you know, more details about your runs. So, you know, it's just so much data. Um, if you're, you know, into data and analysis, this place would definitely be for you uh, or you know so yeah number eight on the list is Strava apps so number nine on the list is something called running races which you can get to on the top of the toolbar you hit explore and hit running races 
basically this gives you a list of all the featured races from all over the world um, and then you know you can sort by countries uh, and it looks like only a few of them are available like UK, Germany, Sweden, France, and US and it looks like the UK is using this uh, for the most part um, US only has the Boston Marathon listed so I believe this is probably still in a beta phase um, and it will be, uh, be used more in the future but this is really cool if you're not looking for a race around your area you can sort by distance, the date, the city country and then if you're interested in an actual race you can go click on the race and what the cool thing um, is it'll tell you the actual you know time the date and it'll give you the actual map and the route of the race and tell you the course information which is really cool so and you know if you're actually interested there's a button on the top that takes you to the official site uh, where you can go and actually register for the race so yeah the running races uh, thing is pretty cool. You know, I just stumbled upon it one day, and I, you know, this is really nice if you're, you know, focused or interested in one of the races to get more info on it. And then, you know, you, there's week by week training that you, you can post on um, the athletes are doing. And then there's also race discussion where you can talk about the race as well. So yeah, that is running races on Strava. So number 10, last but not least, we have something called Strava Local, which you can get to from Explore on the top in your dashboard and Local. So this is really cool. So if you travel a lot or you know you're a runner that you know runs in all different places, um, if you click on Local, it gives you a list of all of the countries um, that Strava has actual routes that are made for. So all of these routes are made by you know actual runners or uh, cyclists. So all of the athletes are actually creating these, and you can actually click on a city that you're going to. Um, and you know, if you, for instance, we click on running. And Australia, Melbourne, so you'll be able to see all of the cool routes that you can actually do when you're visiting that city. So this is really neat. So if you're like visiting a country for the first time, and you want to actually run as well, you can visit this uh, local guide to see if there's a you know a route by the city that you're visiting, and this will give you you know. Um, the details of that route like the, the elevation you know the mile um, total distance the uh, what type of route it is and also give you some stops like cafes and bars that you can go to on your run so this is really cool it's kind of like a you know a vacation <laughs> tour guide <laughs> kind of thing so um, so it'll tell you who created the route as well as you know a description of the route so this is a really cool feature, you know, for people that travel a lot and it's, you know, it's just uh, really neat. So if I'm in a country that I don't know where to go, I can, you know, maybe use one of these routes to go for a run in the morning and check out, you know, sites at the same time. So yeah, I mean, there's not only a handful of countries on the list, but I imagine that this, you know, will grow in the future. So this is your Strava local basically tour guide of routes that you can take. So that is my top 10 list of things on Strava. I hope you found this video helpful and useful and maybe you learned something from it. Uh, if again, if you like this video, please feel free to hit that like button, consider subscribing. I hope you guys all stay safe, practice social distancing and good hygiene. You know, we're gonna get through this soon. You know, you guys have a safe and wonderful day and I'll see you guys on the next run.